Dear students, I am making this video for those of you whom I believe have an infinite capability of not knowing what cannot be done. True teacher is one who teaches the young how to think and not what to think. So let's start with coordination. Coordination. What is coordination? Coordination means bringing about a balance and synchronizing the activities of the different departments. Tal mil bithana. So coordination is the force that binds all the functions in an organization. Coordination is just like the thread that passes through a garland. So the thread is hidden from everybody. But that thread binds all the flowers together. If the thread gets broken, then the flowers will all fall, fall out. Similarly, coordination is that which integrates all the functions of management. Therefore, coordination is also called the essence of management. So let's study more about it. What are the characteristics of coordination? Coordination integrates group efforts. Now, in an organization, there are different type of people and different type of activities that are going on. So it is only through coordination that all these activities are integrated and the interest of all the people in the organization, they start working towards the same goal, towards a purposeful activity. Then coordination ensures unity of action. Now, coordination, I told you earlier, is the binding force that joins all the departments in an organization. So coordination brings about unity of action. Everybody's effort is united and they, they work towards one goal. For example, there was a manager who had sent four of his workers to move a car that was stationed outside for a long, long time. So he told them to move that car. But those people never came back. So after waiting for 20 minutes, he went out to see what's actually happening. And he saw that two people were pushing the car from the front and two were pushing it from the back. And though they were working very hard, the car was not moving. Why? Because they were cutting each other's effort. So he told them that all four of you push it from the back and then they could move the car. This is just a hilarious example to highlight how coordination helps in ensuring unity of action. So everybody was working in the same direction and the work could be done. Then coordination is a continuous process. It goes on and on. It's not that you have told the workers what is to be done and then you can go and sit in your AC room. It starts from planning and goes on till controlling. So the first function that is planning in that the objectives are set and through controlling, which is the fifth function, you ensure that the standards that were set in planning have been achieved. So if there's any deviation, they are removed. So coordination is also a continuous process because it runs through all the functions, just like the thread in a garland. Then coordination is an all pervasive function. Everybody has to coordinate. It is not related only to one particular level. It is at all the levels of management. Now, let us say the top management decide that 3000 televisions have to be sold. So that is the target for the marketing department. But marketing department cannot sell 3000 television unless the production department makes it. So if the production department makes only 2500 television and there's no stock earlier, then how will the product, the marketing department sell 3000 television? Now, the production department cannot make a 3000 television set unless the purchase department buys all the raw material that is needed. So the activities of all the departments are interrelated and therefore coordination is a all pervasive function. Then coordination is the responsibility of all the managers. You cannot put it on the top management and say that it is your responsibility. Coordination is the responsibility of all the managers. At the top, the top level, they make policies for the entire organization and they coordinate with the middle management. Now, the middle management are between the top management on one hand and the lower management on the other. So they interpret the policies made by the top management and convert it into plans. And the lower level management, they are the link between the middle level management and the workers. And they convert these plans into action. So each and every manager in the organization has to coordinate with the others, his superior and subordinate to get the work done. Then coordination is a deliberate function. It doesn't happen by itself. Things don't fall in place by itself. It has to be done 
deliberately. All the departments may be cooperating, but they might not be coordinating. Let me tell you the difference between cooperation and coordination with the help of this example. Once there was this boy who had this NSS camp coming up the very next day. So he had to leave for the camp early in the morning. So he got his night suit made and when he tried it on, he realized that the pajamas were two inches too long. So he told his mother that mom, please cut these pajamas two inches short. Otherwise I'll trip on it. So mother actually had just received a phone call from a relative who had expired. And she said, I have to immediately go. And I don't think I'll be able to come back. So sorry, my child, I won't be able to do that. Saying that she left. Then he went to his sister. He says, did he please cut those pajamas two inches short because they're a bit too long for me. So sister was studying for an exam that she had the very next day. She said, even if I study the entire night, I won't be able to complete my syllabus. So I'm so sorry. This is the first time you've ever told me anything to do, but I don't think I will be able to do it. So that poor fellow, what he did was he cut the pajamas two inches short and he hemmed it and put it in his suitcase. Then sometime around 12 o'clock, mother returned because it was at the back of her mind that my son had asked me to do something and therefore she came back. And when she came back, she opened the suitcase, took out the pajamas and cut it two inches short. Then she again hemmed it and put it back in the suitcase. Sometime around two o'clock at night, sister finished her syllabus and this thought was hovering in her mind for a long time now that my brother wanted me to do it and I'm not doing it and tomorrow is to go for his camp. So she also, at two o'clock, she took out the pajamas from the suitcase, cut it two inches short and hemmed it and put it back. Early morning at around five o'clock, the child picked up his suitcase and he left for his camp. And at night when he opened his suitcase and took out his pajamas to wear, they were shorts. So this is a very good example of how everybody co cooperated, but there was no coordination. So cooperation without coordination is a wasteful activity. Now let us do the importance of coordination. Why is coordination so important? It is often called the essence of management. First is growth in size. Now, as the size of the organization is growing, number of people working there are also increasing. So there's a need to keep coordination with all the people. So everybody who goes to work, they have their own individual goals. So these goals need to be re reconciled with the organizational goals so that everybody is happy in the organization. When the organization was small, the need for coordination was not felt that much. Then comes functional differentiation. These days, the departments are divided according to functions. Each function has got its own objectives. They have their own policies, etc. Sometimes their objectives clash with the other departments. For example, the marketing department wants to increase the sales and therefore they want to give a discount of 10%. But the finance manager does not agree. He says if you give discount of 10%, the profit will go down. And the finance department objective is to increase profit. So therefore there's a clash between the marketing department and the finance department. So because of different departments looking after different functions, sometimes they're at loggerheads with each other. Therefore, coordination is important. Now, who's going to coordinate? It will be the CEO. The top management will intervene and they will coordinate and settle something between these two erring departments. And then finally, specialization. Because of the complexities of modern technology, there's too much of specialization. One person is only looking after one part of the job and therefore he needs to coordinate with the others to know exactly what he's doing. For example, in a department, one person is making the nuts and the other is making the bolts. But the one who's making the nut doesn't know what is the size of the bolt and similarly vice versa. So the nut and bolt may not fit each other. So when there's so many small, small parts are to be made and then they're to be assembled together, then each part should be fitting into the other. So coordination is a must. And because each department has got specialists nowadays, everybody is a specialist. So a specialist is one who knows about the thing. So he takes all the decisions and he thinks he has the right to decide and judge about a particular thing. He does not listen to anybody else. And therefore this leads to conflict, not only with the other specialist, but sometimes with the other people in the organization also. So let me give you a very funny example to help remember this. Once there was a brain surgery about to start, but the doctor who was supposed to administer anesthesia was not on talking terms with the surgeon. So when he entered the operation theater, he was not on talking terms. So he just picked up the file there and saw 
what is the operation all about and he concluded that the operation is going to be for four hours whereas the operation was for six hours so he administered anesthesia for four hours but the operation was for six hours so after four all four hours the anesthesia wore off imagine the plight of the patient who was being operated upon he wakes up on the operation theater he is going to go into a coma realizing that his brain is all opened up so if the specialists are not talking to each other they're not listening to each other this is detrimental for the organization therefore coordination is required so that all these specialists who are there in the organization and too many specialized things that are being done in the organization they can be brought under control under the same roof management in the 21st century says think globally act locally that means use local resources to make products that are globally accepted so that's all in this video children thank you for watching do keep subscribed and please take good care of yourself